Can I come in your kitchen, baby? And cook all night long with you Good evening, my friends. I am Christina. You are here on the main, and if you are here with us live, then you are cooking cashew chicken curry. This is one of my all-time favorite recipes. If you're watching the rerun, we're about to go through this step by step, all in real time, so you can follow along as well. Ingredients are in the info box down below, and you're gonna find time stamps to any spot that you need to jump to in the recipe, so you don't need to sit and watch everything if you're already a pro. <laughs> but uh, if you're not a pro, this is absolutely the channel for you. We cook live most Saturday nights and um, if you want to get the ingredients beforehand, we do post them on our Instagram at here on the main and uh, this live stream is brought to you by tech savvy they are what keep us rocking every single week thank you so much guys absolutely the lowest prices in canada if you have not called them yet i'm not quite sure what you're waiting for you may like paying too much for internet but hey you do you boo i'm not here to tell you anything else <laughs> this cashew chicken curry is a phenomenal recipe and it's going to come together super quick you're going to have all of your ingredients out hopefully that's a three quarters of a cup of um, roasted and salted cashews. If you don't have roasted and salted, you can roast them and salt them yourself. Um, we've got, I've got a nice big handful of cilantro because we're going to need a quarter cup of it and I'm going to keep some at the end for garnish. I've got uh, one third of a cup of yogurt. I'm using a non-fat Greek yogurt, but you use whatever kind of yogurt you have as long as it's plain. I've got about a one inch knob of ginger. Now, if you are, um, if you do the absolute pro, pro way to store your ginger and you keep it in the freezer, you're going to be able to grate this right onto your cutting board. So every time I buy fresh ginger, I keep it in the freezer. This happens to be fresh today because I just bought a new one, but the rest of that root is going to go straight in the freezer. It's going to keep just like new and you'll always have fresh ginger. It's, it's perfect. I've got a tablespoon of honey. And, um, if you are not using honey, you can use brown sugar, white sugar, coconut sugar, palm sugar, whatever you have, it does not matter. And one and a half tablespoons of red Thai curry paste. This is a Thai curry and it is not authentic. I'm sorry. This is like a takeout, fake out kind of thing. And, we're really not going to, this is inspired by, I love Thai food, I love all food, and this is, this is definitely inspired by those flavors. And we're using kind of everyday ingredients, so you're gonna, this is something you're gonna be able to come back to. Once you buy that Thai curry paste, you have it. You can always make this. I've also got a half a cup of chicken broth. This is my homemade chicken broth. I'll show you guys how to do that uh, on another video. But if you've got store-bought, you're using veggie broth, what I wouldn't use beef broth here, but certainly veggie chicken, that'll get you to where you need to go. I know we got some people doing a vegetarian version of this tonight uh, with some chickpeas. If you do um, fish, you could definitely do this with shrimp. I would add that at the very, very end. But the star of tonight is going to be these boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and I've got eight of them. So guys, if you have your chicken thighs, one thing, if you're cooking this by yourself, you wanna get those chicken thighs out and onto a plate nice and, and flat, because we're gonna season them up before they hit the pan, and that's gonna happen relatively soon. The way I'm gonna show you how to bring this together, it's gonna happen quick. Um, so stick with me. You should have, as well, something you can um, process your um, your curry curry sauce in. I've got my magic bullet handy when we use this. Uh, turn my mic way down. Like, make sure you turn your volume down because this is gonna be loud. But hey, it, this is live. It has to survive live here. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this entire meal in a nice wide bottom saucepan. So I've got this guy here. It's uh, nice and wide, about 12 inches across, about three and a half inches deep. This is, um, this is the best way to make sure we get a nice even cook on that chicken. 
So definitely make sure you've got a, uh, a pot like this. Mine has a lid. If yours has a lid, grab it. If it doesn't, grab a sheet pan, something that we're gonna be able to cover this pan with because we're gonna use some residual heat to make sure that everything gets cooked nice and thoroughly. The last, last, last thing you're gonna need is rice. I'm using a cup of basmati rice. You use any long grain white rice that you want. Even if it's a brown rice, it's going to take longer to cook and we're going to do the white rice version here, but I'm doing a cup of it and that we're going to do on the side. So I kind of lied. It's not all in one pot, but you get the deal. I am sipping on a little beer. Let me know where you guys are at, where you're coming from tonight. Mm. This may be one of the only episodes we ever do where I have a knife here, but I don't even know if I'm going to use it. Maybe for the garnish at the end. Guys, this is going to come together so quick. You're going to love it. Let me know you're with me. Let me know you're cooking. Actually, the reason I have this beer, truth be told, is because there was a rumor two weeks ago I wasn't having anything to drink, and people thought I was pregnant. No, not, not yet. <laughs> So grab your drink. We're going to the stove very, very shortly. I want you guys to preheat that pot, that pan, sorry, that you have on the stove. Preheat it to medium and that's going to heat up while we prepare these chicken thighs. Who we got? We got Rhett Ron from Sudbury. We've got uh, Bryden from Petawawa. Hey buddy, how's it going? <laughs> We've got Alyssa in Quebec. Is that what we say, Quebec? <laughs> and uh, yeah, everybody got your beer ready to go. Perfect, guys, you are ready. You're a pro by this point. Um, we're gonna start by lightly seasoning these chicken thighs. Now, chicken thighs are phenomenal because they have all that fat and connective tissue, which I know sounds gross, but actually translates to flavor. And so you'll see, I'm just going to lightly salt this chicken. I'm using pink Himalayan salt. If you're using table, use less than I am. I'm also going to... Lisanne, bonsoir. She's coming to us from the French Riviera, as always. I'm seasoning this with pepper, kind of liberally with the pepper. So when you're cooking chicken thighs, guys, there is a temperature when you're cooking chicken thighs that all of that fat really starts to melt. If you've ever cooked a chicken thigh and thought to yourself, this is weird, it's, it's chewy, it's, uh, there's a lot of fat pockets in it, you're not cooking them thoroughly. You're not cooking them all the way through. So I want to encourage you guys, you can't screw up chicken thighs. Like if, if, if you don't cook your chicken thighs um, long enough, they're not going to be as tender and juicy. If you cook them too long, they might be a little bit dry, but they're going to survive. And so if you've ever, um, if, if you've never done this and taken your chicken thighs to that magic temperature of 185 i want to encourage you to do that tonight and i'll show you the key indicators to how you can know that it's there um, i also have an extra pro tip which is to grab this pretty badass thermometer that's actually on sale right now they're clearing out the thermometer um actually while i'm talking about it i'll show it to you um, if you guys, you guys see me use this every week, the Thermapen, we're going to use this for the chicken tonight. This guy's on clearance right now. The, uh, the gray one is on clearance. I think the white one was on clearance. Click the link in the description box down below and actually click the, the color gray and you'll see it's like 25% off. It's crazy. They discontinued the color. So anyways, Thermapen emailed me to tell me that and now I'm telling you. <laughs> So this chicken, liberally seasoned, um, lightly seasoned actually, I mean, who are we kidding? This is medium seasoned. Like, I season everything liberally. I would say we're at like a medium season here. Because we're working with so many big flavors, there's a lot of room here. Like, you're not going to screw this up. If this is your first time cooking with us, this is a great recipe to start with. So, welcome. Let me know if you're new, actually. Mmm. Maria is here. That's my mom. <laughs> okay, so this chicken is ready to go. My pan is getting hot. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to bump up the heat to a medium high just because I'd like it to come up a little bit quicker. And I'm going to transfer this chicken over to the stove just so that it's ready for me. Um, grab your cooking oil. If you're using 
Um, if you're using coconut oil or you're using a vegetable oil, like an avocado, make sure that is over by the stove because, uh, oh, Bryden, Bryden's a noob. <laughs> Noobs, welcome. We need that cooking oil by the stove because it's all going to um, come together right here. So make sure you have that over there. Get that little food processor out. Don't worry, we are going to wash our rice. If you've never washed your rice, stick with me. You're going to tonight. It's going to be great. So. Krista and you. Perfect. Look at everybody. Wow. You guys are great. So supportive. Thank you. If you are watching the rerun of this, uh, if you like learning step-by-step -step how to cook in your kitchen, real food recipes that you can do on the regular and rely on, uh, make sure you subscribe. And after this video goes live, make sure you go like it, leave me a comment. Um, the star of tonight's meal is these beautiful, beautiful cashews. I will leave you to look at those while I grab my camera to bring you over to the stove. You will see we've got this beautiful chicken happening right here. We're ready to go. Grab yourself some tongs because we're going to need to work um, fairly quickly and, and with our hand. We want some distance from the pan with our hand. So I've got actually my longer tongs here that I'm going to switch to. And for later on, when we start this curry, I'm using one of these guys. This is a wooden uh, flat edged spatula. You don't have one of these, grab whatever you do have. Grab a regular plastic spatula, grab a wooden spoon. Doesn't matter. Perfect, heat is coming up. What we really wanna do here is get the heat up because when I put this chicken in the pan, we want the crust to start forming. So this is where we start to develop flavor right away. Now, your chicken thighs should go in um, top side down. So I'll show you really quickly here which side is the top side of these chicken thighs. This smooth side is the top. This kind of mangy looking side is the bottom. So we want to go top side of the chicken down into the pan. And we are ready to do that now. So guys, grab your cooking oil. Like I said, I'm using avocado. Best price on avocado oil, excuse me, best price on avocado oil that you're going to find is at Costco. And I'm doing two turns of the pan. One, two. We want a nice liberal coating of this on the bottom. And here I go. So here's my chicken thigh, down. Chicken thigh, down, smooth side down. Here, smooth. I just kind of jimmy them in the pan so that they all fit. I'm not too concerned about uh, them crowding the pan because I'm gonna get the heat up. So. A lot of times what happens when you cook a lot of meat in a pan all at once is it can tend to boil and steam rather than sear. Now, to avoid that, because I really do want this to go quickly, um, to avoid that, now that all my chicken is in, I'm going to bring the heat right up. I'm going to bring the heat up to high and I'm going to watch it. So you want to watch this, make sure nothing's burning. But what I want to happen is see all this steam coming up? This is largely moisture. We want all that moisture to evaporate so that the chicken can brown. And once this chicken is, um, is starting to do its thing, we're going to, and I feel confident leaving it alone, we're gonna bring this sauce together really quickly. So you'll notice it might stick a little bit to the bottom of the pan, that's okay. It will unstick itself when it is ready to come up. So don't fuss with it too much. And like I said, guys, you're not going to screw this up. So let this go. If all of your chicken is in the pan, you're sitting on high, you can actually move over to your curry building station, which for you should be your little food processor, whatever you have, little food processor, your magic bullet, whatever you are using to puree all of this stuff together. I'll grab my phone so I can see your comments. If you guys have any questions, please let me know as we're doing this. Um, Brian, if you're still with us, cook live with us next week. I bet you, uh, I bet you have fun. 
grab your, um, your cashews. Load your cashews into your blender, whatever you're using, because we're gonna puree these cashews first. And we're going to puree them like nearly to a, almost like a, a butter consistency, nearly a butter consistency. So like I said, this is gonna be loud and I apologize, but here we go. Beautiful. So you will see, there we go. I have some ultra pureed cashew. I still have some whole pieces in there and that is okay. Don't worry if there's still some whole pieces of cashew because this is going to get pulverized once we get the liquid in. Now guys, I told you we're multitasking tonight. Check on that chicken. Remember, I jacked the heat and now I'm starting to hear a sizzle. So when you start to hear it go from like a boil, like a <laughs> to a that's when you know good things are happening. And I'm checking my chicken and I can see brown. So that means I was successful in eliminating that moisture and now I can turn this heat down to medium. So turn that heat down to medium. You're gonna be good. We're gonna keep bringing that sauce together. What we are looking for is brown. We want the chicken breast to be nice and brown. Everything's gonna finish cooking in the sauce, so don't worry. We're not trying to cook the chicken all the way through right now. We are just trying to develop flavor. Brown always means flavor. So this is a fantastic way to get that moving. Awesome. I'm gonna leave this, it's doing well. How are you guys doing? Let me know. Mm. Cal and Nick, I know you're there. How are you guys doing? Okay. Now, I'm going back to my cashews and I'm adding the rest of these ingredients. Guys, it's that easy. I'm adding my chicken broth. Bam. I'm adding my Thai curry paste. And I can still hear that chicken. I'm, I'm still getting a good sound. We don't want it to burn, so check on it occasionally. But it should be good. Add that honey or your sugar or whatever you're using. Oh yeah. Guys, this is gonna be the most full flavored situation in the like, no time. The, the uh, Greek yogurt is going in. Your ginger, now if you're grating your ginger, grate it. I'm gonna give it a rough chop. And now you're probably like, why isn't she peeling it? Because guys, I'm here to tell you, and I know this must shock, might shock you, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Look at this beautiful, fragrant ginger. That is stunning. Chop that up, rough chop it, get it into your blender. Throw in a pinch of salt. That's about a quarter of a teaspoon. Grab your cilantro, about a quarter of a cup. I'm gonna use the stems and all because I don't know who decided we were going to discriminate against stems at some point. Not here. Shove that in. My friends, if this is not the easiest recipe, I mean, I hope you're subscribed. Excellent. Lid back on. I can hear some aggressive searing, so before I blend this, we're gonna check on that chicken, friends. Let's go. Oh, yes. Look at that. Get over here. Come on over. Don't be shy. Look at this chicken. That's brown. Heck, yes. I'm gonna flip these. And guys, they should release you can hear this. I'm just gonna let the chicken do this talking here. Don't worry about the splatter. That means you're doing it right. They'll release fairly easily. Look, I'm barely having to scrape underneath. 
There we go. Stunning. Guys, if your chicken all falls apart, you can't get it off the bottom, scrape it off the bottom with one of these things. Just scrape it. <laughs> Add in your curry mixture and, and whatnot. Guys, this is going to come together regardless of how you cook this chicken. That is how foolproof this is. It's beautiful. This is flipped. That's going to keep cooking. I'm going to bump my heat up just a little bit because, guys, you need to remember... When you're cooking and you put food in the pan for the first time, your pan is super hot. So there's a big transfer of heat that happens. Then it lowers the temperature of your pot very, very quickly. So when you are flipping over your meat to the next side, you generally have to bring your heat up a little bit to maintain because you're putting the cold side down. You're not working with that same big, big heat from the very beginning. So do some of these things. Watch what's happening. Can I sub cilantro? Uh, we are using cilantro, Ron. You can sub parsley if you want. You don't even need the cilantro if you don't want. It's completely up to you. Hmm. Like I was saying, guys, monitor the heat in your pan. If you th see things happening too quickly, lower your heat. You'll be able to slow down. I love the magic bullet. Here we go. I forgot to say, I want this to be completely smooth, so keep going. Okay, now my favorite little tool in the kitchen an espresso spoon, because you know we're trying this before we do anything with it. Look at that color. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Look at this color on the sauce. Wow. The flavor on this sauce will be money, guys. I had one of you say to me, how come there, there, are, there's no onions in this? There's no garlic? No, there isn't. Could you add some? For sure. You can do whatever you want, but I actually... I don't think it needs it, and it keeps it even more simple. Oh, yes. Mm, guys, this is money. Bring this to the stove. You are going to love me. You are absolutely going to love me. Let's do this. Okay. You know what that's going to pair well with? This beer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. This pairs really nicely with the beer, actually. This is uh, drinking a Mill Street Organic this evening. Let's check on that chicken. Oh, yeah. Nice brown flavor. Good, good, good. Guys, I'm pumped. I'm so pumped. Okay. Now, the second side for the chicken we don't need it to go crazy. We don't need it to be crazy brown. I'm actually happy with where this is at. I'll show you where mine's at. This chicken's only been cooking for what, like less than 10 minutes? Here's the other side of my chicken. Not too brown. We've got some good stuff happening on the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna scrape all of that off. Guys, the pièce de résistance. Here we go. Add that sauce. Add that sauce, and you make sure, my friends, you scrape every little bit of this sauce as much as you can get out into that chicken. I'm going to reduce my heat. Mm. Reducing my heat to low right now because I don't. I want to have some time here. I want to scrape this off the bottom, move all that chicken. Just beautiful. Give this a scrape, give this a mix. Oh yes. Nestle that chicken into the sauce. 
you'll see there's a lot of there's a lot of um, heat happening here and I want that heat to stay in there so I am going to put this lid on I'm gonna leave this on low mine's on number two right now I'm gonna see how that heat mellows out I might bump it up to number three or four depending we want this to be at a bare simmer look how quiet it just got a <laughs> chicken <laughs> and this needs to be at a bare simmer and I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes because I don't want to lose track of this but I want to start the rice let me know how you guys are doing like I said this is gonna come together quick tonight we're gonna be eating in no time oh <gasps> look I forgot this little bit of sauce oh what a travesty I'm putting that in as the sauce is money it tastes so so good Make sure I got everything out. I'm actually, guys, I can't even, I don't want to waste this. I'm just going to put a little bit of water, just a little bit. You can do this too. I've got about a quarter of a cup. It's all going to evaporate. Don't worry. I just don't want to waste this. This is Italiano style. I'm sure other cultures do it too, but hey, I'm just going to add in that sauce. There we go. Now I, now all is right in the world. If I did something didn't feel right. Do you feel that? I felt it okay that's gonna live over here I'm just gonna mix in that water scrape off the bottom yes and guys oh sorry <laughs> told you it's live it's live you're going to get some stickage on the bottom because those um those nuts want to go down there don't worry about it too much just scrape it up as best you can that's all flavor I think I might just grab a, um, I just want to grab a metal guy because I want all of this to come up. That's all flavor and I want it to be in my sauce and not on the bottom of the pan. So encourage it to come up as much as you can. Your dish will thank you for it. Because like I said, this is coming together quick, guys. Nestle those chicken thighs back in. Okay, we're back on track. All is right in the world. I can't believe I wasn't going to rinse that out. I mean, really, I know it's live and we're thinking about a lot and doing a lot, but like you got to stay true to your roots. Okay. Lid back on. I'm still on number two and I'm going to show you guys how to wash some rice. My favorite way to wash rice. Actually, let's get this chicken plate out of here and you're going to come somewhere. You've never come with me before. You're welcome. We're going to the sink. Mm. And I'm going to show you, come on over. I've got kind of a medium saucepan for this rice, nothing crazy. I am going to put my one cup of ba basmati rice. What did I say? Basmati? I think it's basmati. Into this pot and I'm going to cover it with cold water. Can you come any closer? Yeah, come closer. And I'm just going to use my hand to agitate the rice. And look, guys, look how cloudy this just got. That's because all of the starch is coming off the rice and going into the water. So now rice is heavier than water. So if you go ultra slowly, this is pro tip, we're dirtying less dishes. Go ultra slowly and pour that water. You're going to see right at the end, when you get to those grains that want to go down the sink, you say, no, not today, and you do it again. We're gonna rinse this rice three times or so until we get less cloudiness in the water. So I fill it up, I give it a few tosses, just agitate it a little bit, let those rice grains settle to the bottom and do the same pour. This is a pro, pro move, guys. This is my third rinse and look how clear the water is now. This is nowhere near as cloudy. When I did this first, you couldn't even see, oh, I'm making a mess. You couldn't even see the rice through the water. That means we've gotten rid of a good majority of this starch. And that is going to help us get nice, distinct grains when we boil this rice, which is exactly what we're going to do. Now, you can do all kinds of stuff to this rice. You can, and it's okay guys, if there's still water in there, that's completely fine because we're gonna add water. <laughs> if you wanna add um, some turmeric, you wanna add some cumin, um, 
Oh my gosh, you can add anything. I'm gonna add some coconut oil to this and salt, of course. First, I'm gonna do water. So I'm gonna do, normally it's about a one-to-one -one ratio, but because this rice is now wet and there's some residual water in here, I'm not gonna do quite a one-to-one. -one. So I'm gonna do a cup and probably three quarters of water. If I find it dries out too much over here, guys, guess what? This like, you add a little bit more water over here. It's that easy. We don't need to stress about it. This is beautiful, okay. So I'm gonna wipe this burner off. Do you always do this with rice? Um, what would you, sir? Okay, sorry, I missed some of your questions and comments because I was over here. Let me finish the rice and then I will answer those. Grab your salt, guys. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they don't season their rice properly. I'm doing about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt in here. And I forgot to get it out earlier, but here I go. Yeah, and talking about prices of things, best price on coconut oil is definitely at Costco. And I'm gonna add a tablespoon of coconut oil to this rice. I just like what it does to the rice. It gives kind of a creaminess. Um, coconut oil gives kind of a nuttiness. It's just lovely. I enjoy it. You do what you want. You want to do a nub of butter? Mm, I like that too. Mm -hmm. So good. Perfect. Now, lid on. Onto the stove. And let's put this on high, medium high. I'm going to go up to number eight. Because I have the lid on, keep an eye on what's happening. I'm gonna answer your questions in a minute because I missed the buck tonight. Candace, we missed you. <laughs> I'm gonna check on all of this, then we're gonna come back here and answer some of your questions. Check on that chicken, you're allowed. Oh guys, look at this, come see this. The smell coming off of this chicken should literally almost make you cry. I like to give this a stir every once in a while, scrape the bottom, Oh yes, it should come up really easy now. Oh yeah, so see how there's that like oil on top? Guys, that's the fat coming out of the chicken. Remember I told you, I'm gonna tell you how you know that things are happening. That's how you know. You're gonna see the fat coming out of the chicken and you're going to see it literally start to fall apart. This, did I mention, I'm sure I mentioned, this is one of my favorite recipes. I have been making this for probably the better part of five to seven years. I don't even know, we all lose track of time. Oh, the smell is outstanding. You think about how few ingredients we used for this. Guys, it's truly a spectacular miracle that you can create something this quickly in your kitchen with ingredients that are not hard to find. You can find curry paste in every damn grocery store now, like every single one, there are no excuses. You can make this uh, sauce ahead of time if you want, and then just brown your chicken thighs for dinner. I'm gonna leave the lid off right now because I want this to reduce, and I'm gonna bump my heat up a little bit to number five. Like I said, you need to monitor what's happening. If you're looking, you're saying, oh, okay, it looks good, but I'd like this. I thought the sauce was gonna be thicker. Well, bump your heat up, it will be. <laughs> that, that moisture will evaporate. So we're going to let this go right now, and uh, I will check on this rice. Yeah, the rice is gonna come up. We don't need to worry about that. I'll come over here and answer some of your questions. Mm. And enjoy my beer. Sometimes I'm so busy talking to you guys, we don't uh, get to enjoy. So, um, Alyssa says, I usually don't like cilantro. You know what, it took me until probably, um, I don't know, like in the last decade for me to start liking cilantro. So definitely if there's something you don't like, a food you don't like, keep trying it. I know that sounds weird, but it's great to not be pickier, to not you know, have any food aversions. It just opens up your world so much more. So keep trying it. Your, your taste buds change over time and you adapt. So that was me with cilantro. <laughs> um, uh, Alyssa says, what would you serve this with? So we're serving it with rice tonight. If you wanna do a little sauteed green on the side, you can. Um, if you want some greens in there, you can certainly 
uh, broil some broccoli. I'm not a huge fan of steam, steaming my vegetables. I usually like to roast them, broil them. You could put the broccoli in there. You could put a couple handfuls of spinach in there. Uh, you could do something on the side. That would work really well. And uh, do I always do this with rice? I usually do do it with rice. If you're looking for uh, a different option to up the nutrition, you could do um, spaghetti squash roasted. You cut a spaghetti squash in half, put the two halves down, let that roast, and that would be a really good base for this. Ah, it's my timer. It's 10 minutes. Guys, when we do these cook-alongs, the time just flies. Like I can't even, I can't even tell you. Um, I am gonna check the temperature of my chicken so that I can get a read on it for you guys to kind of see where we're all at. My trusty thermopen, guys. This is the best. This is the only thermometer you will ever need in your life. It is um, accurate, like within one to two degrees. It is an instant read, which means the second I stick it in this chicken, it's gonna read read it for me. And oh, look at this, 180, 180. Heck yes. Who knew? Who knew? As if we're gonna be waiting on this rice. Come on, rice, wow. All right, try to true tricks, here we come. Bump that rice up to high. This curry, for me, honestly, is done like this is done i'm gonna turn this off because there's no reason it needs to continue i'm gonna turn it off i'm going to leave it on the heat with the lid on because like i said i don't need to worry about those chicken thighs this rice i'm gonna encourage it to come up by bumping up the heat give that a little stir for the coconut oil perfect that'll go so i mean by this timing we probably could have started that rice when we started the chicken but hey are there any, let's see. Uh, yeah, perfect, you guys have any questions? This is a great time, we can go through those. Um, what is, what's the wine pairing with this dish? So I've got a beer actually tonight. Um, I'm a firm believer in drink what you want with what you want. I'm certainly not a like wine expert. I would love to have one on though. I have a, a girlfriend who, who is a wine expert. She does it for a living and I would love to have her on. But uh, Larry, how's it going? <laughs> but, um, I think with something spicy like this, I mean, you're, uh, I think the beer goes really well. Um, I think anything with bubbles like a Prosecco or a Champagne <laughs> would go really well. Um, Pinot Grigio, I find goes with everything. I always have Sauvignon Blanc in hand, um, but I think, I always think wine pairings are a matter of preference and taste because everyone's tastes are so vastly different. Um, there's probably plenty of people that would pair this with a Pinot Noir, a Red, it would be great. Uh, a Zinfandel uh, would be great with that. But like I said, I think I would love to get my, my girlfriend on and, and to get her talking about some of these things because that would be very, very fun. Oh, there's my rice. Perfect. I'm going to, I got my rice up to a boil, which means I'm going to knock it back to a simmer, except it's not going to want to be at a simmer because it's very, very hot. Just making sure it lives there. I might have to keep running over there. Let's see. Uh, Krista here, ours is more creamy and not red like yours. Should I add more curry? Uh, don't worry about the color. The color is just a matter of the particular curry paste that you are using. Um, it should be creamy. Let me know if you used the yogurt and the blended cashews. You should absolutely, you should definitely have the creaminess. Um, but you, the color, don't worry about the color because all curry pastes are different. My curry paste, and I'll, I'll grab it so I can show you guys, is um, this is my curry paste. And I always buy the one with the authentic writing on it because it's so much cheaper. So this is my curry paste. It's very, very red. I'll show you right here. Um, if you have a less red curry paste, it's just going to be a different color. But the flavor should still be there. Let me, let me know how, how it's looking there. Um, if you do want more curry flavor, yes, absolutely. Add more curry, not a problem. Um, everything is super adaptable to your taste. So make sure you do that. Mm. Lizanne is asking about brands of basmati or jasmine rice that are better than others. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you remember, because rice, all, this is the case with all plants. Plants are 
or coffee or it really anything. Anything is, is a byproduct. I'm not even all plants. What am I saying? I'm talking crazy. It's the beer. Every, all food is a byproduct of what it was grown in. So there, there absolutely is. I keep checking on my rice because I'm trying to make it hurry up by keeping it at a good simmer, but I don't want it to boil over. Um, yeah, like I would definitely look for... Um, I mean, if you can get an organic rice, that's fantastic. A lot of rice does come from Asia and they have some weird things sometimes happening with uh, pesticides and, and whatnot. So if you can get an organic rice, that's great. Um, I, washing the rice goes a long way as well. But I think when you're putting things into the rice, you're gonna notice less of a difference. So it's the same as uh, we have a video on the channel um, bruschetta caprese, which is a beautiful tomato bruschetta and you use in-season tomatoes with, you know, perfect milky mozzarella, fresh. Um, and in that case, we don't use a lot of ingredients in that recipe because we want the flavors to shine. If you were masking those tomatoes with all kinds of other things, it wouldn't matter if they were in season and delicious and fruity and, and juicy. So uh, all ingredients, it depends really what you're doing with them. If you're uh, putting it on a curry like this, I would say a rice probably, you're not gonna notice the differences as much. If you're doing a sushi, for example, you'll notice a massive difference. Let's see. Global Food Book, how's it going? Fantastic YouTube channel, by the way. Same curry, oh, same question for the curry, ha. Huh. Again, I love, whenever you're buying authentic ingredients or ingredients that are, are ethnic, I like to go for the ones that have the um, the native language on them because I find they're a lot cheaper because they're not marketed to us <laughs> and they they just pack an incredible punch. Um, there's like the Thai kitchen brand. It's a very nice brand and that's the one you can normally find, but I do find it expensive. I don't think there's a huge difference between this one and the, and the Thai kitchen brand. One brand that I'm not a huge fan of for their curry paste is uh, Blue Dragon. I just don't find it packed. I think they, they pack a lot of water into it. When you look at the ingredients of a curry paste, guys, it should be it should have no filler in it. This is red uh, dried red chili, lemongrass, garlic, shallot, salt, kaffir, lime, galangal, and uh, coriander and cumin. That's it. There's not any oils in here. There's not any fillers, emulsifiers. Your, you want to read the ingredients on your curry paste and that will tell you how good a quality it is. Um, and that's, that's really how I, I choose a curry paste. I look at the back of it. Uh, oh, a, a, Alyssa says a crisp dry Riesling would probably go really, really well with this. Phenomenal. Bryden says we used full fat Greek yogurt. Probably the reason. Oh yes, Bryden. Yes, you use full fat. My man, <laughs> I absolutely would have done that, but I don't usually buy full fat Greek yogurt. And I also, if you guys start um, watching the channel and, and cooking with us on the regular, you'll, you'll get to know. I, I try and, um, I don't know, cut corners where I can, where I don't sacrifice flavor. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's one of the things that I do. I buy, that was 2%, I think I had. It was a mixture of 2% and 0%. But you will have like the creamiest, creamiest curry. I am jealous, my friend. So, so, so good. <laughs> Eunice, how are you? Um, Ron wants to know, does the curry paste go in the fridge once it's open? So I do uh, put my curry paste in the fridge once it's opened, just because I buy it in this giant thing. Um, it doesn't specify on it that it needs to go in the fridge. I just, I don't know, I feel a little bit better about it. And they stack really nicely on top. I have a yellow one, I have a green one. I can't even stop smelling it. Like the smell is so, so good. Um, the, one of the main ingredients in here, the galangal, and the other one, the kaffir lime leaf. I keep both of those in their whole form in my freezer because I love Thai curry so, so, so much. It's probably, one of my top five flavors of all time is that kaffir lime, that red Thai chili, the fish sauce. I just, just love it. So let me know if you guys want to um, see more of these types of recipes. Again, they're not always authentic, but they're, they're meant so you can create them in your kitchen, in your home, reliable stuff that you can go to repeatedly. Um, Kathy, the bloom organic rices are very good. That's a phenomenal tip. Thank you. 
Uh, where do you buy the B-O? B-O. Mm, I'm not quite, oh, stupid. Oh, they're talking amongst themselves. Oh, you guys are cute. <laughs> so cute. I'm checking out my rice. And guys, I'm sure you've cooked rice before. Mm, it's phenomenal. That needs like three more minutes and it's done. Keep an eye. Make sure you keep an eye on that heat. It's just going. I My method for cooking rice at home, which again, this is live. I don't necessarily cook so that we can plate it up perfectly and you can look at it after and go, wow, that was pretty and never make it again. We do these so that you can create these recipes over and over and over again. And when I cook rice on a regular basis, honestly, I'm doing a couple of other things. So I'm putting it on the stove, waiting till it overboils, <laughs> then cranking the heat back and then checking on it when I remember and go, oh, that tastes done. Usually it takes about 10 minutes. Sometimes it can take 15. You guys keep an eye on it. This is not... This is not rocket science. I want to encourage you guys to um, to undertake these types of tasks in your kitchen because it's really not that difficult. I've got some uh, cilantro here and I'm just going to actually give it a little chop because my former foe turned friend. We are going to, uh, I'm going to garnish with just some of this at the end because I happen to have so much. If you don't have any more, don't worry. No big deal. And guys, I always tell you, don't pulverize your, your herbs. We don't need to go over this again. I just like a nice, just release that flavor. There we go. If there's some big leaves, that's okay. It's beautiful. Oh, Alyssa says the smell in her kitchen is amazing. Mm. <laughs> We're almost done, guys. Make sure you subscribe and, and cook along with us. I did last night um, just for myself and and my loved ones, a, a whole fish. We roasted a whole fish in the oven with a very, very special method that you, that you may not have heard of before, or not heard of, but you may not have thought of for a whole fish. Let me know if you guys want to do a whole fish dinner. It was spectacular. I served it with some risotto. I used the same method that I showed you guys a few weeks ago. So I'll leave an info card so you can get to that episode. Um, but we did a risotto. I roasted some fennel, tossed the fennel in. It was just beautiful. Mm. Phenomenal. You guys are all doing so well. I'm very, very proud of you. Good job. I'm gonna check on this rice one more time. Mmm. Beautiful. That's beautiful. I'm going to prepare a plate. Give this curry one last stir. This is stunning. Come see this. They, I'm going to show them this, uh, <clears throat> this final product. And guys, this is all flavor. You're seeing this like pool here. That's chicken fat. <laughs> you, you, can, you can spoon it out if you want. You don't have to eat it. But... I'm eating it because it's so good. Guys, look at this curry. Like I said, you might get some stickage on the bottom. Just get it up, incorporate it. That's all good stuff. This is flavor. This, when, when you get this color, that is a deepening of the spices. That is a caramelizing of the cashews. I want that on my plate. I do not want it on the bottom of the pan. Stunning. This is a stunning, stunning dish. Now, if you're cooking for two people and you made eight chicken thighs, there's a reason I told you to do that, and you're welcome. It's because you're going to have leftovers. Yum, yum, yum. Mm. Guys, this tastes like actual heaven. Okay. I'm ready to plate. Oh! <laughs> like, I can't. I'm not over exaggerating. I cannot fake this. This is so good. Let's see if you guys are doing well. Curry dishes are your favorite. Perfect. You guys love it. You love curry. I love curry. Let's be friends. I'm going to plate this up. I'm going to grab some rice. And you'll see, guys, look how fluffy this rice is. It's stunning. This rice is beautiful. Rice in the bowl. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to eat this. Rice in the bowl. I'm going to get myself one two who are we kidding probably three chicken thighs i mean i'm starving i miss lunch heck yes i'm gonna get some sauce on there <laughs> i'm just gonna 
Get some cilantro on there at the end. Because this smells so, so, so good. I am floored. I hope you are too. Look at this. I'm going to show you. You guys, you guys see this texture on this chicken. Look at it. I just put my fork in and I turn and it's falling apart. This chicken, look at that. All of that fat has melted, has rendered. Oh my gosh. I cannot thank you guys enough for joining me tonight. <laughs> if you guys want to cook with me next week, please subscribe. When this video goes live right after we end, please like it because it really helps our channel. I'm going to eat this right now so you can see how good it tastes. I'm sure, I'm sure you know you're cooking it. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, guys. Sorry, I know I'm silent because this is so good. I haven't had this dish in so long. Thank you so much for cooking along with me tonight. I hope you guys had fun. I really hope you do. I always have fun. This, this time flies by. I'm going to keep eating this. Like I said, I'm starving. But thank you for joining me. I'm Christina, and you, my friends, are here on the main. Bye-bye. Can I come in your kitchen, baby, and cook all night long with you?